This is uh, my drone image of the biggest highway in Lithuania. This is A1 by Lithuanian numbering, and we wanted to create something similar, of course, not in such a high speeds for Osmoderma. <laughs> between two biggest cities, Vilnius and Kaunas in Lithuania, and the distance between them is one, uh, over, a little bit over 100 kilometers. And for us, it was a uh, little bit problem because didn't, we didn't have a lot of basics, uh, basic information where exactly those best locations could be for, the, for this particular beetle. So we used Osmoderma as an umbrella species, but backwards. We got the data for our species before. Of course, this was totally incomplete, but at least it was something. And we used GIS uh, analysis from those points to find out the most valuable and the most uh, important sites on this particular road. And a result was this hexagon mesh, which showed that some areas might be quite important in our road. So this helped us create some possible scenarios. And we started, of course, by the shortest and the, that has most points and most value from our point of view. And in this territory, we investigated over uh, 1,500 trees that are potential or suitable for Osmoderma. Some of them uh, were in Natura 2000 areas. Some of them were, were in between. And on the map, because I'm a map geek as well, uh, you can see how those points are located in the area. So in total, uh, because it's not a straight line, it's a little bit more than 100 kilometers. So approximately 110 kilometers between Konas and Vilnius. And then there was a time for action, the most interesting part. So uh, we have some variety of uh, problems that we wanted to solve. Like in uh, urban areas, there has been some not the most wise actions implemented in some hollow trees. So we had to remove some concrete, uh, install a fire suppression systems in some areas and try to not to be vocal about this. So probably this is the first time in public that I'm admitting that we did something like that. Because if I would like tell someone that yeah, we have suppression system with trees, next day would probably burn. <laughs> but maybe in this audience I feel pretty safe about it. So uh, in other areas, uh, the standard overshading was a problem. So it was not a problem to implement, it's the biggest problem to organize everything and to present for the public, for the foresters. Um, in some areas uh, where former meadows, where now is an ar ar arable land, and the pe farmers usually try to farm is as far as possible. So when we reach the trunk, then they stop usually. So we try to create a little bit of this protection zone for the trees as well. Uh, canopy ma management with the arborists, we uh, managed uh, over 600 trees in this particular way. Uh, in some areas where the soil was compacted, we used mulch or even uh, air uh, hammers to, to, to cr uh, crush this compacted uh, ground and left the work for uh, moles and <laughs> and other creatures to, f to finish the job and to, to cover and protect the cavities when in, the, in the public area when there is a possible problems with some bad people. Uh, this is how it looks in between Natura 2000 areas. Some trees we even manage without life funding because when we go to the pr uh, private landowners, we said, hello, we are from Lefein and from for Nature, we'd like to fix the tree, we have a very nice tree, would you like to? You, I don't need, just say what to do. And I will, yeah, we'll need to cut those, no worries, it will be done. And some ma actually managed this one. Of course, ours postponed, 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 and then we agreed that we finally gonna make by ourselves. But ours, uh, this is uh, 
one of three uh, our core areas. So the forested areas, of course, they are not so intense in the management, but this on, the, on your right is Conus Oak Forest, where over 700 trees, veteran trees, were uh, inventoried. And we managed over 400 trees in that particular area. So it was a crown jewel in our project. And for me, like this was a crown jewel that was l almost 100 years ago. Of course, we couldn't reach such a beautiful image because we have to let left some more trees because public would gonna guillotinize us. And the cows are still missing, but I really hope that some years up front because there is a Kona Zoo nearby, so maybe a giraffe's gonna come back and <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what kind of animals gonna be there, maybe Taurus. Um, and of course, uh, as you know from the Simpson cartoon, the best ideas are stolen ideas. So <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Life Bridging Gap and its team shared the blu blueprints of, uh, of their uh, Mulm boxes. Uh, we installed them, a little bit upgraded. So for example, we have some cheeky woodpeckers that would like to use this Michelin five-star hotel and try to eat it out during the winter time. So we put the wire mesh around it, uh, also put, put um, some cutouts from the metal as well around those, those holes for bats and, and, and the birds. And we use a little bit different way, we use them as a starting point for our captive bred population. So it was much easier to come in, p put the ladder on, take off the cover, put the larva in, make a picture, close it, leave it, and the next season when you dig up, larva is still there, so the condition is supposed to be suitable. Uh, some sexy topics like uh, Osmo dogs. Uh, we tr try to train the dogs uh, and because three of uh, our colleagues had the dogs at the moment uh, and there was a specialist in Austria so we traveled there and the specialist also came here to try to teach the dogs not to use the pheromone traps but, but the dogs to <laughs> try and find the larva or actually its smell or actually the ball that's supposed to be as a present for the dog. And as everything it works quite okay if you work with the dogs. The pro biggest problem if you make a big pause then you're probably gonna have to do the whole process again. And uh, one of her colleagues, uh, Vita, was so into it that she later go, go to customs of Lithuania to catch with drug dealers, dealers. And she said that the process is totally the same. So if you want to catch a drug dealer or, or an Osmoderma, <laughs> the smell is the difference. Uh, the technology that we are so uh, into. Uh, we, because uh, we did the inventory all across the Lithuania. It's not a big country, only 300 kilometers from one side to another. But if you want to go back and forth in one day, it's still annoying. And especially when you have lots of daughter around, it's like 16 hours drive. So we try to save the fuel and uh, save the specialists by making smart traps. This idea was burned by, uh, by my colleagues in Daugapils University in Latvia. And uh, we had some problems without those traps and with traps as well and by making them and making them suitable. So at the beginning we wanted to use artificial intelligence and to show the trap that we got the beetle. But because it's dark the shadow was also showing as a beetle and there are lots of shadows under the trees. So um, the, the computer there was not maybe in my, like my laptop, but still more powerful than my first computer and it used a lot of power. So we installed bigger battery, it was still sucking up, we put the solar panel and it was still not enough. So at the end there was needed like a heavy lifter to lift this like 15 kilos trap in, in the, and install it uh, into the tree. And uh, probably I deadlift with most of my team, so it was not an option. We needed something different. And at the end, uh, this is our current result. So uh, Osmoderma fans gonna recognize this part. I think so, like pheromone, 
and the box for the beetle. But the difference is this small box, so which contains some Raspberry computer, camera, and GPS, uh, GSM modem. So it's actually like you take an Osmoderma tra uh, trap and install your smartphone, but the smartphone can work for one and a half months. So that's actually the main difference. And we try to use the common electronics, so anyone who at least some basic knowledge and uh, knowing how to solder a few wires could make something. The code is open source, so you don't need any particular knowledge. You just in install it, put a SIM card, and you go. So it actually helped us a lot. Of course, also created some problem because antenna was not powerful enough and we had to actually climb under the tree and put at least a few meters up for this antenna to, to reach a GSM connection. And on the right, you see a picture of Osmoderma, how it looks. There is a party of two Osmodermas in that particular case. And uh, after our in inventory, you see that there are lots of places and some are quite far away from our this primary objective. So it's really nice to have such a possibility to use such a tool. And of course, all good things sometimes end. Our project just ended in a couple of months. And now we prepared a, a idea and presented for European Commission for a Live Osmo Baltic, not, uh, not only Lithuania. I'm sorry, Estonians, you like just a little bit this small part for Osmoderva, but really hope so that it, pos it will be possible to uh, involve some Estonian part partners as well. Um, unfortunately, this year we didn't succeed, <laughs> but we really hope that we could uh, a little bit improve our proposal and it will go we're going to get a finance. And this is our former team. So all you see that is was all work was done not only by me, but with this wonderful, beautiful, big team. So I'd like to share my gratitude with them as well. And I really hope that you got some ideas and maybe new tools or, I don't know, some insights that would like to answer if you have any questions.